Okay, so we're going to read this article uh, by Austin Henley. I don't know who that is. He might be a bad person. I'm assuming it's a he. Um, but they work on AI, so probably a bad person. I'm just kidding, Austin. I'm just kidding in case somehow you found this video. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's read through this. It's going to talk about how big nums work, apparently. He made a big num library for fun. It doesn't look very long, according to my scroll bar over here. So we'll see. Apple intelligence. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you know, I, I actually... I don't I didn't follow the whole uh, whatever they call it, like their whole. What is it called when they announce everything? But yeah, yeah, I didn't, WWDC, that's what I was thinking of. I was going to say <laughs> I was going to say South by Southwest, like SXSW, but I was like, no, it's definitely, that's definitely not the right thing. Uh, oh, man. Okay, let's read this article. Um, but anyway, my point was I didn't think about that they're like overriding that acronym, and that's just such a, such a fucking Apple thing to do. Is it not to be like, oh, AI? That doesn't mean artificial intelligence. It means Apple intelligence um and that's that's way too funny okay <clears throat> let's re let's read this making a big num library for fun what happens when numbers get too big for a computer to work with for example a 64-bit unsigned integer can be as large as 18 comma 446 comma 744 comma 073 comma 709 comma 551 comma 615 that is huge but what if it isn't enough okay good times enter big nums or arbitrary precision numbers these very very large numbers allow you to go beyond cpu limitations for representing integers and performing arithmetic limited only by the computer's memory nice one sec Um, okay, so x equals very large number plus one, very large number, 44, 44 long. Okay, very exciting. If you open up Python and throw some really, really big numbers at it, you'll see that it works without any issue. Although C requires using a library for big nums, Python supports them right out of the box. In fact, you can use big numbers and small numbers interchangeably, and it is completely abstracted away from the programmer. Um, <laughs> good point, Dota. Good point. I've always wanted to know how these big num libraries work, so this is my adventure. My adventure in learning about them. Since Python supports them, I thought I'd go. I'd just go and learn from C Python's implementation. It can be found in long object, long object .c. Nearly 6,000 lines and 100 functions. Um, so, yeah. Instead of reading 6,000 lines and 100 functions of C code, which is fine. Uh, never mind. It is more fun to learn from doing. <laughs> it's, not about, it's not about how absolutely overwhelming and annoying that would be. Uh, to try to understand by reading the code. <laughs> uh, it's just more fun. I think that's fair. So I'll implement a big num library myself. I'm going to use C, but the approach should be similar in most languages. You can see my code on GitHub. Cool. Representing big numbers. I had an initial theory of how big nums work. Treat numbers as strings and manually perform arithmetic on the digits as you would on a piece of paper. I'm pretty sure that's not how... That's not how uh, big nums would work. Um, so I would I would really doubt that that's true, but we'll we'll find out. Um, 
This big num struct will represent our numbers by storing an array of digits. Next, we need a way to initialize a big num with a value. Okay, so we have a struct that has a car star and an int size. Okay, very exciting. Has an array of digits and a size. Okay, and then we have a function big num int that takes a big num and a car star and in size equals sterling stir and digits equals malloc in size times size of car store digits in reverse convert from ascii and digits i equals stir blah 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 okay this lets us initialize a big num with a value from a string it allocates memory based on how many digits the number has it subtracts zero from the digits to convert the ascii value to the numeric value eg3 is 51 in ascii so subtracting zero gives us the numeric value three okay we then store the digits in reverse order this makes some of the arithmetic arithmetic logic easier later like for carrying so the number one, two, three will become three, two, one. Now we can create a big num like so. No, stop this scrolling. Stop it. Stop it, computer. Okay. So big num in it. A big num. We can free the memory by using big num free. Okay. We don't really know if our code is working as expected though. So let's implement a print function. Print f big num, sure, sure, sure. It loops through the digits starting with the last element in the array and prints each of them as integers. Try it and you'll see we can now represent really big numbers. It is pretty boring though, since we can't do anything with them other than look at them. It is necessary to compare numbers like a is greater than b or a equals b. We will implement a comparison function to handle greater than, less than, and equal to. Um, int big num compare const big num a const big num b sure, uh huh uh huh. They check size first. Little little bit of a performance optimization. Um, if the numbers have the same number of digits, then we do then we do to do, then we do to do then we do to do. I do a lot of do to doing. Do to do a digit by digit comparison. We start with the most significant digit and go until a difference is found or there are no more digits. If the numbers are equal, we return zero. Here is how you can try it. No, stop this. It's doing the scroll thing again. Uh, big num in it, big num in it, big num print, big num compare and big num free you should be greeted with a is less than b when you run it that makes sense because they're the same length and this has a one and that has a nine addition we are finally to the fun stuff arithmetic this article is not very long we're almost done we're over halfway through um so let's see how this works doo doo what's up josh um <laughs> this is not OCaml. I said maybe some article reads one byte. You have to read the you have to read the whole title. All right, one sec. Okay, perfect. Uh, Snivellus says, how do you go about figuring out a large project? I have a hard time com comprehending the entire project. I try to see how everything fits together, but it seems my brain cache runs out. If you mean like something, do you mean Snivellus something that you are trying to code or something you are trying to understand that someone else has written? That will depend on my answer. That will depend on my answer. My answer will depend on your answer, actually. Uh... Let's break down how this works. First, we determine how many digits the result might be making the size of the bigger 
Oh, wait, I didn't actually read this. Okay, we are finally to the fun stuff, arithmetic. The add function will work the same as you learned in grade school. Start with the least significant digits, add them, carry the one if necessary, and repeat for the next column. Okay. Cool, cool. Sure. Result digits, malloc, max size plus one, size of car, and carry equals zero, and I, I see, I see. And we're doing a little sum here. Okay, store the last digit of the sum, carry any overflow, uh-huh. Okay, exciting. Um, first, we determine how many digits the result might be by taking the size of the bigger number and adding one. For example, if the addition involved 99 plus 3, then our bigger operand is two digits, but we add one to handle the case of carrying over to a third digit, like our example would require. Then we allocate memory for a big num of that size. The loop looks more complex than it is. At each iteration, add the corresponding digits from both operands without going out of bounds of each array. If either of the arrays go out of bounds, treat the digit as zero. Also handle the carry. Continue the loop while there are still digits or there is a carry. Test it out on a variety of combinations, big and small, small and big, same sizes, different sizes, etc. Okay. It should print the sum as this number right here. Yippee, our addition is working. Following a similar pattern as addition, multiplication won't be that difficult to implement. It too will use a grade school algorithm. Multiply each digit of the first number by each digit of the second number, then add all of the results together. Yes. Very cool. Okay, I'm not going to read the code. It starts by determining the upper bound of how many digits the multiplication could produce and allocates them with zeroed values. Then we have a nested loop based on the lengths of the operands. At each iteration, we multiply the corresponding digits and add it to the results corresponding digit. Then move any overflow from that digit to the next digit. Finally, we remove any leading zeros since we may have overestimated the number of digits. Let's test everything all together now. Okay, which should yield. There we go, we have demonstrated a working concept of a big num library. The code can be found on GitHub. We can initialize, print, compare, add, and multiply big numbers. I was surprised at how straightforward it all is. Yeah, this was a really short article. Of course, there is still a lot we'd want to add before actually using this, negatives, type conversions, and many more operations. I'm not done with this adventure though. There are some really interesting optimizations that I want to learn about next to be continued. Okay, that was cool. Uh, nice little article, Austin. Um, and I'll catch up with chat here in a second. Uh, I don't know when to use malloc for, I, I'm so bad at C Dota. I, I am, despite, despite what my GitHub stats would tell you, I am not a C developer. There's a reason I write Rust. All right. Um, so yeah, this was cool. I'll put the link to the article in this little article read. Uh, this is not how I assumed this article was going to go. I, I actually never really put a lot of thought in how big nums would be represented. I thought it would probably be like a combination of different bytes together and you kind of like store different parts of the number, but I never really thought of it just being a string. I wonder how other big num libraries do it. I wonder if this is like standard practice or what. Uh, so, hey, things I don't know. But uh, very interesting. Uh, enjoyed the little short article. And there it is. Thanks. Bye.